Hello everyone, I'm Brior and welcome back to Good Game Empire. In today's video we have some very exciting PvP content from the US-1 server war. My alliance was recently the victim of a mass attack that, at its peak, had over 400 incoming horns. In today's video I will defend my own castles against 5 or 6 regular sized attacks and also a handful of tool burners. Now this is not something that I necessarily have a lot of experience with. I did participate in the old server war, but back then, as you can see in my old videos, my account was not nearly as developed. I've been masked myself once before, and now, here's the second time. So my point is that in today's video, I'll do the best I can, and at the end of today's video, I will identify a number of ways that I could improve, but I hope that you will find this content interesting nevertheless. I'll talk about some general mass attack tips and techniques here at the beginning, then I'll shut up for a while and just let you watch, and then I'll join you again at the end of the video to explain what I did right, what I did wrong, and walk through the results of all of the different battle reports. So let's get going. The first thing to know is that when your alliance is being massed with a mass attack as sizable as this one, you have two enemies. Your first enemy is obviously the alliance that is attacking, but your second enemy is the game itself. When there are over 400 horns coming in on your alliance, the game is going to slow to a crawl, and you absolutely should not rely on moving around your Castellan equipment at the last minute. Let's say you have two large attacks coming in on your castles, and they are 45 seconds apart. If this were to be just two regular attacks, not part of a mass attack, you could probably get away with switching around your Castellan equipment, but with so many attacks coming in at once, the game will have a hard time processing things, and you won't have that opportunity. One way to mitigate the lag is to go to your options menu and turn all of the travel arrows on the world map off. This makes it a little bit more difficult to determine where the attacks are and whether or not they've landed, but it will help drastically with load times. You can see right here that the map was just stuck for about 20 seconds. So anytime you exit to the world map and you can't do anything for 20 seconds, that really cuts into your time that you have to set up your defenses. The very first thing you want to do is take a look at all of the attacks that are coming in and decide which ones you want to defend against. Then, make sure that all of your castles, at least the ones you will be defending, have the proper Castellans equipped, have wall space build items equipped, and have whatever tools you'll need to set up a defense. Now, I make a series of defense calls in this video. Some of them work, some of them don't. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But none of them would be possible if I hadn't spaced out my tools in advance. Furthermore, the more uh, powerful Castellans you have, the better you will do, of course. I recently watched a Good Game Empire video here on YouTube by somebody else who claimed that you really only have to have one powerful Castellan. One powerful Castellan will get you a long way, but you'll need four or five if you want to have any hope of defending yourself against something like this. Furthermore, you will of course need defenders in all of your castles, and I'm happy to say that I had, I think about 50,000 of my own defenders. Obviously, you will not be getting support from your alliance when there are 400 to 500 incoming horns. You have to fend for yourself. And that brings me to my other point, which was, uh, pick the battles that you're going to fight, but pick the battles that you're not going to fight, and put your fire casts up, and make sure tools are out, and troops are out as well. If there is a really powerful attack coming in, even if you can defend it, it might not be worth your time to go through the setup process, and it might not be worth your troops. Instead, stack as many troops as you can at the one or two castles that you pick to defend. The more troops that you have in any given castle, the better you'll do in the courtyard, uh, so keep that in mind as well. I personally decided to defend my main castle, and my second outpost, and my ice castle, and my fire castle. I had enough good Castellans to make that work. Now, in Everwinter, I had an attack coming in that I thought I might be able to defeat on the gate. I actually didn't notice that uh, about 200 of the troops that I thought were melee attackers were actually ranged attackers, so it didn't go nearly as well as planned, but once again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. 
or rather at the end of today's video. To make that happen, I moved over my Castellan with the highest wall space to Everwinter and I put up a wall space build item. I also made sure to move over about 650 uh, premium Ruby melee defenders. You want to space out your premium defenders, especially your melee ones, among all of the castles that you're defending, because remember, you need those special defenders for a better chance of holding the wall. In my main castle, the first attack that came in was, I thought, pretty weak. It was using a lot of coin troops, and so I thought I might be able to get away with defending both flanks. As you'll see later in the video, I came very close. I did have a Castellan look, upon which I had put a wall space build item, but unfortunately, in all of the flurry and in all of the madness, that remained on my first outpost, and I did not move that over uh, to my castles that were being attacked. That's one of my mistakes. Had I put this on to my main castle, I would have probably come even closer to holding the wall, or at least one flank, and uh, that's too bad. But uh, it was an interesting setup, and I'm happy that I tried it out at least. The more you experiment with your setups, the more you'll learn. If you just default to going all melee with all line bombs on the flank every time, you're not going to learn how to properly set up your attack, uh, your defenses rather. Uh, so experiment within reason. Another reason that I was willing to experiment was because, as I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of defenders and I also sent a lot of attackers out of my castle. In fact, I was having trouble feeding my troops overnight. The most I could get with them evenly spaced out between my castles was about 8 hours, maybe 9 hours actually, before they all starved off. So I had to stay up late and wake up early and it was miserable, so I was willing to kill off a few extra defenders. For the most part, other than the attack, the first attack rather, that I received at my main castle, uh, and for one attack that I received at my second outpost, all of the incomings were pretty well tooled, they had powerful commanders, and I did go with a pretty generic defense setup. I moved over my defenders in the Burning Sands to cover my ice castle. The reason for that was because I wasn't being attacked in the Burning Sands. There were also a few tool burner attacks coming in at my monument, so I put around 200 defenders there to make sure that it wouldn't be lost. I actually have the monument right now for the month of January that my alliance is using, and it is fully upgraded to provide 20% extra glory points. It would of course be pretty simple to recapture that, and they do not lose their levels when they've uh, changed hands or become empty, but I didn't want to deal with all that hassle, so I put in a few defenders and I held it throughout the mass attack. You can see that it's about this point in the video when I decided to go into the options menu and turn off all of those travel arrows. The game is still loading pretty slowly, and that's made worse by the fact that I have OBS open and am filming this but it is much faster than it was before, and that gave me the opportunity to set up a few more defenses properly. Even after I had turned off the travel arrows, it was pretty close though, and I wanted to do something in my main where I just put up six tools uh, per slot on the wall to defend against the first attack, and then I would let a tool burner through, and then I would put up tools again and adjust my setup from that multi-flank uh, setup that I was talking about earlier over to just a simple one flank with all melee and line bombs But unfortunately because of the lag I was not able to do that if I was given another opportunity And maybe one will come later in the server war. I'll simply put up enough tools in the first place to Defend against all of the attacks. I think it's important that you be willing to lose a few tools against a tool burner for the purpose of holding the wall, because as you'll see later on, against that second attack that I defended at my main, my setup was not correct, and I lost all three sections of the wall. Still, because I had a lot of troops in the courtyard, it didn't go too terribly wrong, but again, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. I think that's all I have to say for now, so I'll be quiet for a few minutes, and you can watch me scramble around trying to set up some last minute defenses at all of my castles, and I'll join you again near the end of this video to go through the battle reports. I'll see you then.
All right, hello once again, everybody. It's about time to take a look at the results. As you can see, I'm just uh, rearranging things pretty much after the fact at this point in my castles. So let me go ahead and open my inbox and we'll have a look at how I did. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I did not do perfectly. There are things that I can improve on and we'll talk about that, but I wanted to upload this video and show you guys the results uh, nevertheless, because I think that this content can be interesting, and if it's a learning opportunity for me, it can be one for you as well. So I refreshed the page, you can see my might points went down a little bit, and you can see that I have a number of battle reports in my inbox. I, for the most part, deleted the battle reports that were tool burners. Here's another one, we'll just take care of that right now, and we'll look at the real reports right here. So defense victory at food 2. You can see that I lost 3,600, and the attacker lost 2,800. Here's a look at the details. I held that flank pretty well. Those were some ruby melee defenders. All melee, all line bombs, just a standard setup. This Castellan does not offer as much troop space on the wall, but it turned out okay, and I had enough troops in the courtyard to fend off these ruby attackers. Ultimately, I'm pretty happy with this one because he lost ruby attackers and I lost coin defenders. Works out well. Here's another attack in my main castle. This attack was the one where my setup was completely wrecked. I didn't have any tools on the wall and I was trying to defend both flanks from the previous attack, the one that we'll take a look at in a moment. However, because I still had a lot of troops in the courtyard, it didn't go horrendously. I wouldn't be too embarrassed to share this report among my alliance or, in fact, here on YouTube. Still, it would have been better had I moved over my look and had I had a proper setup, obviously. Now, this was the worst attack of the bunch. This is the one that landed in the Fire Peaks. Unfortunately, I did lose the flank here, and that was primarily because I did not have Ruby Melee Defenders. If I had had Ruby Melee Defenders, it would have been a lot closer, probably would have held, and it certainly would have held had I moved over my wall space Castellan look. Now, because I did not have as many troops at this location, the courtyard did not go very well, and in fact, I lost this one by a slim margin. Moving on, this attack came in at my second outpost. It went much better, held the flank very easily that time. In fact, I very likely could have held both flanks. However, it would have caused the same issue as it did at my main castle. You can see here that the attacker sent way too many mantlets and not enough moat tools, which is why I was able to hold that flank so easily. That was about a one-to-one -one ratio. Very happy with that one. Here is the attack that came in at my ice castle. I did not hold the center as I was hoping to. First wave of attack went pretty well. It was melee attackers against melee defenders. The second wave was ranged, but you'll notice that uh, those ranged attackers are pretty unusual, and I didn't actually recognize them as ranged. If you go back and take a look, you'll see that uh, they don't look like they have bows and arrows, but they did, and uh, that is why this center defense did not hold. Oops. It's very difficult to pay attention to details like that during a mass attack, and so I probably should have gone with a more conservative uh, defense just by trying to hold the flank. Now, it is rather unusual that an attack would have uh, ranged defenders down the center in both the second wave and the third wave, but it worked for uh, this attacker, so what can I say? Moving on, here is the report, my, the first report at my main castle. You can see that I was pretty close to holding both flanks. Once again, if I had moved over my Castellan look, I would have come pretty close to holding this defense. So there you go. And once again, courtyard was about even. This report uh, seems fine to me. All right, folks, so those are all of the results for this particular incoming mass attack. Obviously, there's some room for improvement, but that's a good thing because next time I'll be a little bit more practiced and I'll do an even better job. And let's be honest, I didn't do that bad of a job this time either. I hope you enjoyed today's video because if you are interested in PvP content, this is about as exciting as it could get on my channel. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like on the video, maybe get subscribed. As always, I've been Brior, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.